Hi, this is Kate McKinnon from the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Project. This is a video showing step one of a new exploding podcast set that we're demonstrating this week. And this is only three rounds of work. It's a tiny little podcast bead. We're using size eight round beads for the center starting ring and size 11 delicas for the fabric of the podcast bead. Please consider using these materials as you'll then be able to get the same results. If you choose to use round beads instead of cylinder beads, it will absolutely still work. It just won't look quite as spiky as our model. To begin, choose your size from one of the basic four groups, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. The size of your center ring corresponds to the number of points your podcast bead will have. I chose 22 beads for my ring and my podcast has 22 points. This is a medium size. These sizes will work no matter what you're trying to do. So start here. Extra small and small, you're going to make a ring of 20 beads. Medium, 22 beads. Large, 24. And extra large, 26. The first thing you're going to want to do is gather all of your beads on your thread and then join them into a ring by passing through the beads three times. So here's one round of my start for my 22 point podcast, right? And I'm going to go through these beads three times and then I'm going to tie a knot to reinforce my thread. So it doesn't matter how you go through these, right? But you can see that if you're not actually holding the circle, they tend to run away from you. So grab onto the beads, pass through them three times, and then we'll make a knot. So this is three passes through the ring, and now I'm gonna do the thing that I rarely do, which is tie a knot in the beadwork. Now, if you hear voices behind me, this is a meeting of the CGB research team. And Franklin Martin, Nico Williams, and Julia Predel are here, and we're working on the new books. So, I tie a knot, and then I am going to pass back through the ring, bury my thread, and in this case, remember, I want a sturdy ring, but not like the ring of death. It doesn't have to be super tight, just sturdy and uh, hide your thread a little bit, pull your knot through, and now you're ready to do round two, which is the square stitch. Just a reminder, I'm making the small size, the medium, 22 beads. And if you are any of these other sizes, this is the size of ring that you will be making. And this number will also correspond to the number of points in your podcast bead. So as I do the next two steps, and this is just a three round piece, you'll see the first round is just square stitches, and then the third round are increases. Now I'll begin adding the increases. Each bead in the center ring has two beads square stitched to it. And a square stitch only involves the bead you're working on, but for convenience, pass through two beads with each stitch so that you're in position to take the next one. So alternate colors. I'm using yellow and blue. And square stitch is a simple loop. Whatever side your thread is coming out of, go in the other side so that your beads sit on top of the parent bead with a hinged loop. And that way, the square stitch hinging makes it easy for you to adjust the position of the beads. Arrange your stitches so that the increased beads alternate, one up and one down. So when I'm done, I'm gonna have a yellow side and a blue side. So I'm going to repeat these stitches all the way around the bead. So I'll have 22 increased beads. So I will be going from 22 sets of increased beads. So I will be going from a 22 bead edge to a 44 bead edge in the blink of an eye. So continue around the bead in this way until increases have been placed on every point. When you finish putting on your last two bead increase, pass your thread through a couple of beads and then come out wherever it's natural between one of the sets of two. I like to stagger my step ups this way so that I'm never starting and stopping in the same place, but that's just a personal preference. When you get to this point, 
Now you've got this second step finished, so that's just the second round, right? And you can see that all the beads don't fit in a circle, so they sort themselves out, one up and one down, and if you can help them out by the way you hold it, then you'll have an easy alternating pattern. One color on one side and one color on the other, but don't worry if they get disorganized. You'll still be fine. So now I'm going to do the third and final round which is very simple. I'm going to place an increase on top of each two bead set. This is a standard herringbone or triangle increase. And then I'm going to pick up a spacer. This is the important part. Pick up a spacer and then go through the next set of two beads. And then as you pull each of these threads tight, this is what will begin to build the little zigzag that you see on this pod. So I'm going to go around this, and I like to turn it every time. Again, that's just personal preference. I bead toward myself. Right? You do what you like. Use any thread. Use any needle. We're using Delica 11s, but any beads work. We're using round 8s and Delica 11s. And just come up between each set of beads. Put two more beads on. And then put on your spacer and pass through the next increase set. So again, I turn it just because I do. You can see the nice zigzag beginning to build. As you put the herringbone increase on top of each two bead set, your spacer bead, and then pass down through the next set of two. You'll see the zigzags building beautifully along the edge of your piece. So I'm going to do this 22 times total around the whole edge of the piece. I'm about to put the last increase set on now. I'm all the way around the ring. I'm putting on one of the last spacers. And here comes the last increase of the set. And this is actually the last increase of the project. This is it. There's just three rounds of work for this wonderfully useful tool. Here comes the final stitch, which is just the last spacer. And go through the increase here. And take your time. It's a small project. You want to get it right. You don't want any cross threads. Um, and so there's the final stitch. And now I'm going to check my work. And um, it doesn't hurt to make sure all of the little tops of the increase lines are sorted out. So I kind of go along and make sure everybody's sorted out fine. Don't pull it too tight, but snug up my tension a little bit. And then I'm going to hide my thread by passing through every stick of the podcast bead. I'm going to pass through every leg and reinforce it. So take your time. Don't miss a bead. And don't pull it too tight. Just give it one round of extra thread in each leg. And then when I'm done doing this around the entire ring, I'm going to weave in both of my threads and then the job will be done. When you've finished reinforcing the sticks of the podcast bead, find your way to the center ring. Pardon my tail. <laughs> find your way with your thread to the center ring. I'm going to back out of that one bead so I have a natural entry from one of these into the ring of beads and hide your thread. That's all you need to do. Just hide your thread in the center ring of beads and make sure when it goes in that it doesn't catch on any point and disrupt your form. So perfect. And here's your chance to pull your center ring a little tight. You want your bead to be springy. No, not super tight, but if you have any looseness, go ahead and shore it up. And then, uh, careful not to cross any of your threads. Run through the center beads just a bit to make sure that your tension is locked. And then you can just cut this thread. And then we're going to do the same thing and weave in the tail. And your tool will be finished. We'll show you what to do with this uh, in the next video tomorrow. But this is all it takes. Three rounds of work. It's about 20-25 minutes if you know what you're doing, and if this is your first one, you may actually spend a few hours figuring it out, but it's well worth your time, and if you do remember to reinforce, this is a tool that you'll be able to work with for years.